Hi, y'all, and welcome to Monday Night's All Meta Mode podcast with Gypsy and myself, Amanda Digger de Gaz. Before we get started with tonight's show, just a friendly reminder that May's issue of Dirt Digest Magazine is available at dirtdigestmagazine.com. This is a monthly uh, internet magazine of treasure hunting, metal detecting, um, all those wonderful things. And there's reviews and finds and awesome stuff. So if you haven't checked out May's issue, definitely go give it a look. And um, yeah, that's that's about all I have. Hey, Gypsy, <laughs> how are hey, you? Hey, I'm doing good. How about you? I am doing better than I have been. <laughs> yeah, I know you've been a little under the weather. So it's good that you're feeling better for sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, between the allergies and, um, you know, we had our basement. Uh, they came in and did that foam insulation. And after 24 hours, the smell was just, it's not fun. So. Yeah. Nauseating smell. Yes, <laughs> but sure. we'll be uh, prepared for winter. <laughs> um, so you know, doing doing home renovations, doing stuff around the house that um, been kind of been putting off, so we can have more fun. And yeah, that's that's about it. So um, oh, cool. Let's see. How was? Um, you got out this past weekend, didn't you? Um, let's see. I did uh, one day on one of those occasions I got out. Uh, my friend Zola, um, she is a local friend that uh, she hasn't been in the metal detecting uh, but about a little over a year now. And uh, she... Um, Anyway, she's really good at researching and stuff like that. So uh, she had found a location near her house when she was exploring where she had found these barns. And so she got on, you know, all these maps, old maps and stuff, and found one house that was like, uh, had been there back in 18-something and there were some other houses along the way. And um, anyway, a long story short, it was up a river near where she lives, which is about a half a mile that you have to kayak just to get there. And then once you get there, you have to hack about a half a mile up. So she convinced me to go. So I took my inflatable kayak. So I have three kayaks. My big kayak is two. I, I need help putting it on top of my car. Mm -hmm. So I didn't have anybody to help me. My oldest son was working, and so um, I didn't have – and plus I need a step on <laughs> because I'm so short. So I think I'm going to have to for this summer when I want to take my uh, really good kayak out for adventures. I'm going to have to get me a little – step stool to help me get up and, and you know, latch the um, the, the cords. Uh, kayak up there yep. and all the cords and the tie down and all that stuff. But anyway, um, long story short, I took my inflatable kayak and then she ended up taking her son's kayak and we um, kayaked up the river and then we hiked about a mile in we had to take a machete it was all grown up and of course i got um poison oak the week before i guess it was the week before when i think we had discussed a little bit about that dump digging that her and i did along another river a different Actually, river that was just you and i <laughs> So none of our listeners. Oh, was it? Okay, yeah. none of our listeners have. Okay, so yeah, uh, the week before then, uh, her and I, uh, we had actually, her, me, Theron, and my friend Cinder had been metal detecting a property, and which I still haven't even have, I don't have that video together yet. 
Um, but I, um, that's another video where we found some pretty cool stuff there. Um, but anyway, long story short, the owner's son came out there and he got really interested in what we were doing and stuff. And we started talking about bottle dumps and dumps and stuff too, because Zola had brought her, um, her bottle probe with her and she was out there pro probing around trying to find <laughs> the privy. And so anyway, um, he tells us about an old dump along the Guadalupe river. And so we're like, Oh, where? And so anyway, he gives us permission to park at, they've got some property out on the river and then kayak up. So the week before we went to this property, or actually two weeks, and then I went. We went back a week later, back to that bottle dump because we got some amazing bottles. So I'll have a really cool bottle dump um, video for y'all as well. I am just behind on um, all of my videos right now, so I've got some really cool videos um, coming out um, with bottle dumps, metal detecting, and some of my travels. Um, I'm still, I just uploaded, by the way, y'all, if y'all haven't watched it yet, um, go to um, my YouTube channel and watch one of my videos where we explore the old Virtue Gold, gold Mine um, while I'm in Oregon. Um, now, this gold mine is where we filmed uh, at this location for the uh, Gold Rush, Freddie Dodge's Gold Mine Rescue. And I went in the mine, and we explored even further this time. And so I've got a neat video there. Got to see some bats, all kinds of stuff. So if you haven't checked out my video, it is 38 minutes long. It is longer than some of my videos usually. So make sure you got time to watch it all the way through. But it was a fun adventure, so check that out. And um, anyway, um, back to the bottle dump, I got poison oak. I'm not allergic to poison ivy, uh, but I got poison oak all over my arms, uh, itched for two, two and a half weeks. Now I got little scabs on my arms, so that's just in time for the beach because I'm going to the beach, uh, leave on Wednesday. So... Oh, but salt water is good for that too. So, <laughs> right, right, should help it heal faster. But it's not itching anymore, really. Um, it's kind of around my scabs. It's itching a little. And uh, Bill from Ohio says, uh, "Step in any guano, Gypsy." <laughs> you know, I probably did in that mine. What we stepped in probably more than guano is there was rat poop, which was not funny. <laughs> <laughs> Fun. <laughs> it was gross. There was some rat's nest up in there. Um, didn't see any rats, but it was, yeah, <laughs> probably more rat poop than I saw. The Now, in this mine, what's really neat about it, we're only on the center level, the, the main level. There is a lower level and an upper level. So when I'm in this mine, we're only in one level. Now, I hear that there's parts of the lower level that are flooded, and I hear also that there are more bats in the lower level and the upper level. So really, really cool. Um, there's just so much. You could probably explore a lifetime in that uh, mine and still find new areas. It's amazing over the years how much they dug out it blows my mind how much they dug out um another interesting area that we explored while we were there uh there are these big rock walls that someone built and we and when freddie dodge was there he thinks that they were built by um the china the, the Chinese that came to work in the mines. 
and it's very possible. So we kind of detected along some of those walls, but there just wasn't, there's just not enough time. Even though I was there much longer this time, there still wasn't enough time to do all that I wanted to do. There's so I've got a video time. with, <laughs> there's never enough time. So um, that was really neat. We found some neat stuff um, along there, but nothing too cool. I was hoping to find an old Chinese coin that would have been amazing along the rock walls. But again, not enough time to detect it all. Just kind of barely, you know, scratch the surface, uh, so to speak. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, yeah, uh, what else? So um, I'll be putting more of those videos out soon as well. Uh, but, yeah, again, leaving for Florida on Wednesday. So I pretty much all packed today, and uh, except for a few last-minute things to throw in the suitcase. I've got my detectors packed. Which, uh, and, uh, what, what detectors uh, are you bringing? So I'm bringing two Apexes, and I'm bringing a Garrett AT Pro. Nice. And the reason why I'm bringing the Pro is I will definitely want to get, it's supposed to be really hot, I think the first three days uh, I'm there. So um, I'll be in the water, water detecting when it's really, really hot. So um, I'm, I was thinking about bringing my Sea Hunter, but I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to take the Pro and, um, um, I'm bringing the uh, brand new um, coil for the AT series. I'm bringing the new um, Viper coil for it Ooh. and uh, test it out there in the water. I think that'll be fun. So, yeah, that'll, that'll be a lot of fun. Um, me, I'm hoping to get my usual rings. Uh, I think last time I found what four rings or five rings I can't remember and the one gold ring and uh, I think one or two silver rings but I love finding the rings and uh, the jewelry that's that's <laughs> yeah that's my favorite <laughs> and I can't remember did I get a gold necklace last time or was it a, a gold chain the time before I went to Florida I can't remember I thought you got a gold necklace this last time, or a gold yeah, bracelet. Yeah, I think it was the last time. Oh, I did get a gold, I, mean, I think the bracelet turned out to be, you know, gold-plated, unfortunately. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, it's still fun to dig that sort of stuff. But, of course, when you're on the beach, um, you know, you like something about digging the, uh, the rings, and the gold rings and the silver rings. And I even like digging the junk rings. They're fun to find as well, you know, as well. So Yeah, and what the last um, time you, you brought the Apex, you were getting some signals pretty pretty far down too. Yeah, I was using that uh, new uh Raider coil, the bigger coil. Mm -hmm. Um and I was getting some amazing depth. But, you know, this time I don't even think I want to dig that deep. So I'm just going to use the Viper coil, I think, and bring the Viper coil. Nice. It gives me all the depth I need uh, for me. <laughs> Sometimes digging down that far, which I guess if I would have dug a gold ring down that far, I might have been, you know, <laughs> like, uh, maybe I should bring that coil. <laughs> but anyway, um Looks like we got a lot of people in the chat tonight. Um, welcome to the podcast tonight. We're just kind of check, uh, chatting about our uh, recent adventures. And um, one thing we did want to talk about tonight is kind of, I know a lot of you do a lot of traveling, and now that um, the vaccines are out and stuff, a lot of people are starting to travel again, and I'll be going to Florida on Thursday, so I was telling um, her what uh, detectors I packed. I packed my two Apexes and my AT Pro, and um, what I do usually, I always fly southwest. Now, I don't know if y'all even, 
I know you have Southwest up there because yeah, I do. flew up up there. So um, I always I like flying Southwest because you can check two bags for free. And knock on wood, I've never had any problems or any. And as soon as I say this, I'm going to jinx myself. But I never have had any issues with my uh, luggage getting lost or anything. But um, anyway, I um, usually pack all my detectors uh, plus my scoop in one uh, one bag and one uh, suitcase. Um, I like using the hard the hard shell ca- uh, suitcase. And uh, what I do is to kind of cushion them. Is I'll take some of my clothes and I'll kind of wrap my clothes in there because by the t- uh, I think the f- the limit is fifty do- uh, fifty pounds. And then if you go over fifty pounds, I think you do pay extra instead of your free. But usually with the t- three detectors in there and my um, all my other stuff that I need, I think it only weighs about 35 pounds. Oh, nice. So um, I can still put a lot more stuff in there. I still got a lot of extra room. So I can pack my clothes in between and probably get away with one bag. But um, for me... Um, I like taking two bags because inevitably we always end up bringing back extra stuff that <laughs> happens. <laughs> yeah. Always. So, um, anyway, I like doing that, but yeah, you can check two bags for free and then just have your carry on. You're allowed two carry ons as well. So, uh, that's why I like flying Southwest. So, I can usually get all my detectors. When I went to Oregon, um, I took three detectors as well and took two two suitcases, checked them, and all I had was my purse that I carried on the plane. So it worked out really well. That's awesome. How about you when you travel? How do you pack your detectors and, and stuff like that? Well, I haven't actually, oh, I did. I was going to say I haven't flown with my detectors, but I did. Um, I actually, I only did the one bag and then took apart the detector and wrapped it basically in the clothes. Um, the scoop, you know, put that in there and had put, you know, you stuff it with full of socks and other things that you might need. And I think I put some of my toiletries in there and, um, right. That worked well, because um, for biz for work I got sent out to California, so um, I detected the beaches there for a little while um, in my off time. And um, I know this last time was more of a drive, and um, yeah, not so much having to really worry about packing because I just threw everything in the truck, anything possible I might need, I tossed into my truck and. Um, that's something, you know, actually I've been looking at campers so that way I could just you know, oh, have my house yeah. type thing with my truck. <laughs> um, yeah, actually might be doing that this summer. I don't know. I don't know. So many dreams. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, the packing thing is more so taking, you know, you take everything apart and then use your clothes to protect it and I, I know I've seen yeah. some awesome travel bags, too, that you can put your detectors in and whatnot, but I don't know. I've never really trusted the airlines with my bags, so I kind of like to have it all as one. With you? Um, yep. I keep the, I take the battery pack out, and obviously um, some of these newer ones, they don't have the battery pack. You know, it's all that uh, plug into the computer to charge and stuff. Um, but, yeah, I've, I've put it in my, in my carry-on, so... Yeah, I have been nervous about checking it, but I know you've knocking on wood. So you've yeah, had good luck. Um, <laughs> I've had good luck. Yeah, Bill uh, Hayes was asking if I do carry on or if I check them, and I've always checked mine. Um, one time, I accidentally. This is a funny story. I've probably told this before, but I accidentally left on the flight back home my one of my pinpointers in my backpack oh, no. and they 
they search my bag and they pull the pin pointer out and the guy's like, it says Garrett metal detectors right on the pin pointer. Mm -hmm. And the guy's looking at it going, what's this? You can't carry any kind of tools over seven inches in your bag. And I'm like, uh... It's a metal detector. Uh, you know, he didn't understand pinpointer, so I said it's a small metal detector. <laughs> you know, and finally, he, he, you know, waiting and waiting and waiting, and finally he goes and shows it to some woman, and then she's like, he comes back and says, I'm sorry, ma'am, and then puts it back in my bag, and then <laughs> like says, I'm sorry, I'm huh? sorry. I don't know, but yeah, he was like, you can't take a tool over seven inches on, like, carry it online, on the plane and all this kind of mess. It was crazy. <laughs> so, but yeah, I have not tried the car carrying on my detectors. A lot of times, another reason why is because they're funny about carrying, you know, like your digging tool. My mm -hmm. digging tool looks almost like a knife. Yes. Um, and I do have a little pocket knife attached to like, say my water, the ones, my pouches that I use for the beach and stuff. I got a little pocket knife attached to it, you know, to cut, like when you get fishing line and stuff like that. So, um, I would probably be in big trouble if I tried to carry it on. <laughs> yeah, I I usually have to go through my bag. I had to go through my bag, make sure my mace was out, my knife was out, um, and then just took the scoop, and that was it. Like you know, because I was like, oh, that's the easiest thing. You know, people won't give me a problem with it. And uh, but again, yeah, that was for carry on, not so much, um, not so much bringing it. Um, checking well, it. when you ever come to Texas. <laughs> well, I've got plenty of detectors, though. You wouldn't even need to bring one to just use one of mine. <laughs> but um, when you come visit, you know, you might want to. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to ship everything to you first. There you go. That's smart. Because <laughs> I was going to say, TSA is a lot pickier around here than, I mean, man, they are picky. I mean, we even have. You know, when you go into the airport in Austin, they've got, you know, police there with these dogs that sniff everyone as they go by. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot, a lot different here than it is there, I'm sure. TSA is, oh, speaking of TSA, real quick. Uh, my oldest son and I took a trip. They've got in downtown Austin a warehouse store that is t it's uh, owned by uh, well, it's all the TSA stuff that they collect goes to this warehouse, and you can go in there and buy stuff. And I went in there one time <laughs> and I bought a bunch of pocket knives of all things. <laughs> They had like a bag of, because I just give them away or use them for things. But I, I uh, yeah, I got like a uh, 20 pocket knives for like uh, $5 or something like that. It was pretty cool. So everybody's but, personal belongings type thing that they take away from them? Yeah, that they take away from them. <laughs> so I got all kinds of stuff you wouldn't believe in there. That's crazy. Yeah. Huh. It's a pretty cool store. Pretty cool store. So. <laughs> uh, making more money off the people. Right, right. For stuff that they collected free. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's too much. So, yeah, um, that's all I've I've actually really traveled with it was to California. I wish, I wish I had known and had taken it to a couple other places. Like I, I fly to Ohio for work. If I had known, I would have uh, brought it over to Ohio with me. <laughs> right. But yeah, I like your idea of just shipping to where you know you could always ship if you're flying here to come 
detect with me. You can just ship your stuff ahead of time. And then, you know. Yeah. And then I could ship, we could ship it back to you before you leave. Yeah, I think that's what we did last time you were here. I think that forgot some stuff or whatever. It was easier for me to ship it to you. Yeah, didn't I, I dug a bottle or uh, there was a bottle I wanted to keep and some other things that I think dirty, <laughs> dirty the clothes that we were digging. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, when did I doubt, find someone nearby that you can be like, hey, can you send my dirty clothes to me? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, oh, boy. So I'm sure some of our listeners have other uh, tips on traveling and traveling with the detectors. So if you have any, please drop them in the comments. We'd love to hear them. Um, but, yeah, that's how I do it. I do it, and I never had any issues. So um, hopefully my detectors will... Get there now. One time I did fly to Florida. Now somebody had asked. I think Bill had asked um, where I was flying to in Florida. Um, fly into Tampa and then drive over to Treasure Island and detect those beaches there in Treasure Island. So that's where I'll be. But um, one time I got there and my coil apparently went out on my detector and talk about freak out. I was so upset. I didn't know it was the coil at first, but I was hoping that's what it was. So I called a local guide, uh, Phil Myers that has a detector shop over in Tampa. And he's like, sure enough, uh, my wife and I are headed over there tomorrow to treasure Island. We can bring the coil with us. So I bought the coil Put it on my detector, and that was the issue. Um, yeah. And then when I I uh, called Garrett, because I thought Garrett might be able to help me out too, and uh, I wanted to check. So I went and bought a smaller coil, I think. And then I ended up, when I got home, I sent the coil back to Garrett, and they sent me a new one. So, But, yeah, um, that's my only issue. Now, I do know when I lived in Galveston and I had my metal detecting store, I had a guy once, I've probably said this before, he was all prepared. He brought three metal detectors with him on his vacation to metal detect. And he he had three mine labs that he used. And... Every one of them, something went wrong with them while he was there. So he ended up renting a detector from me so he could metal detect that week. (laughs) All three of them broke down on him. Talk about bad luck. Man. I can't imagine. I mean, that's why most of the time you bring a backup, just a backup. Not not an extra backup. I can imagine one, one messing up and then you've got a backup, but three of all three of them i don't know man somebody must have mishandled that luggage or something. <laughs> it makes you wonder <laughs> but uh anyway so um now i know you've been on some adventures this past week and uh i know you go back to your mud walking spot a lot and you find all kinds of things so um and you took your niece was it yeah. This last time? Yeah, she just she just turned four and um you know, I do videos. They're usually quick snap, you know, something I find or this that and the other. Well, um obviously you all don't get to see them, but I do videos sometimes for my niece and I'll go, you know, her name and go, hey, do you see it? Can you see it? And I'll send them to my <laughs> sister and my sister will show her. And um, so for her birthday and well, even before her birthday, she's been asking if I'd bring her treasure hunting. So I did. I, I We made a date and I went and picked her up um, Saturday morning and I brought her out to one of the mudlarking spots. And But um, I did, you know... I brought a bunch of things. I brought some marbles, a crotobel, a thimble, um, a big uh, silver half dollar, 
and kind of, you know, strewn, strewn them about the beach. So that way, you know, she'd find things and, um, cause you know, uh, with mud lurking, you never know what you're going to find if you're going to find anything. So that was, that was what he did. And oh my gosh, when she, <laughs> she found this big marble, it was like bright orange. Um, and it was a shooter that I had. I, um, oh man, her face, she was so excited, like so excited. And then, oh, auntie, will you get pictures of me with my marbles? So yeah, new generation of treasure hunters that, uh, so that was pretty exciting. Actually, I think that's the first time I've gotten out in a while. Um, and then Sunday I met up with my friend Laura and we went mudlarking and I actually, I was scraping an area just doing, you know, moving around the topsoil and the rocks and whatnot. And I looked over and there was a coin sitting right on top and teeny tiny, size of a trime. It turned out to be a wow. um, 1917 silver five cent Canadian coin. Wow. Yeah. So that was, that, that was kind of neat. Super cool. Yeah. <laughs> I would have been ecstatic if I found that little silver trime size coin, you know? Yeah. That is cool. It, it definitely, it was a lot of fun. I, it was good to see people too. So, um, you know, always sucks when you're not feeling well and things just aren't going your way and then you get to go out and the seeing my niece find stuff that was exciting in itself and then getting to visit with people was awesome so yeah it was good it was good uh bill asked if it was a fish scale i don't know fish what scale. that means it that's a type of i think canadian uh coin uh silver coin they call it the fish i i think i'm not 100 percent sure I don't know. One side's pretty toasty because it's like salt and brackish water. So it looks like it says George the Fifth. And then the other side, it's got like a wreath with a five. And then I think it probably says cents. And then I, you can read the date. It says 1917. So that's all I can really see on it. So I'm not sure. It doesn't hmm. look like it has fish scales. but Well, I don't know if it has it on there but I think that's what they call them but I'm not a, oh. uh, I think a couple people have said in the comments yeah fish scale oh. awesome. I think that's what they call them but yeah it was teeny tiny it was, it was wicked thin at first I'm you like oh my god pictures. I, I want to see it I want to look it up I was cool. like geez Louise is it a trime <laughs> 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 like no way speaking so. of trimes have you ever found a trime I have if I asked you that before. Oh, cool. Mm, I don't think How many? So. One, two? Just, yep, I have one. That's still on my bucket list. So yep. the silver Canadian five-cent coins uh, were called fish scales, oh. Madison Maine says. Awesome. Thank you, Madison Maine. So that, that is super cool. Yes. I, I want to see the photos now. Yes. Yeah, so. But you said it was kind of grayish-black. Yeah, uh, from being in the water so long, I'm sure. I just couldn't believe it was on the surface. So then I'm wondering how long it's been sitting on the surface. And we watched a ton of people, you know, walking around and picking things up. And before we went, made it to that area, you could see across. And yeah, nobody found it. I guess it waited to show itself to me. I guess <laughs> I don't. I don't know. It's the craziest thing to go from. You know, you metal detect and you find what silvers you, you know, you may and to to doing any of this mudlarking stuff. And I think this is silver number four from just being sitting on top of the ground. Yeah. Well, Wayne, uh, Nugget Brain Wayne said it would be cool to find, you know, a gold coin like that. Boy, that would be freaking amazing. Um Man, I can't even imagine mudlarking a coin, and let alone digging one up. But speaking of that, um, after I get back from my Florida trip, uh, we're going to be filming for the uh, Beyond Oak Island um, 
TV show uh, for the History Channel, and we're we're going to be searching some areas where where fingers crossed it would be amazing if we found not only one but one of the caches of Van Bass, um, the famous outlaw, and um, one of the things that you know we're pretty sure he probably buried a cache of was. 1877 freshly minted gold twenty dollar gold pieces. So you never know. That would be amazing if we could find some because uh, not only these were freshly minted, so that makes that coin more rare. Um, but I mean, I don't want to talk too much about the history because part of that they'll talk about on the episode of the show. So when that comes out, I'll announced that to all of y'all so y'all can we can have a watch party or something and talk about it (laughs) but super excited about that but speaking of gold um i'm gonna get to go to the utah um as well and um for the beyond oak island and we're going to be looking for a spanish treasure there so Super excited about that. There's like nine gold mines on this one property. And I was reading some of the history. And let me give you just a little. It's one of the largest um, gold things ever like in the USA. So what would be really cool, uh, we're talking in the trillions possibly. (laughs) Can't even imagine. No. I can't even imagine. I, I can't even imagine. But um, anyway, um, so Madison says, um, "Gypsy, how is Drayton taking a Garrett detector being there?" Um, I don't know. Uh, Drayton will. Gary will be. Um, now, this is beyond Oak Island. It's not the uh, curse of Oak Island. This is a, a spinoff of Oak Island that um, now, unfortunately, they've already started for, well, I say unfortunately, but unfortunately for me, it's they were trying to uh, schedule to where both uh, the brothers, the L- Laginas brothers, Maddie and um, Maddie and... Um, I mean, not Maddie. Oh, gosh. What are the brothers? Rick and Marty. Rick and Marty. Uh, Rick and Marty were going to be able to fly here to Texas to, to uh, film with us, but apparently they've they're already started filming for um, the last season of Oak Island, and uh, so they're not going to be able to make it. But uh, this is uh, kind of an extended version of different treasures in America that different treasure seekers like myself and Amanda or whomever is uh, seeking or looking for. And this is one right basically in the backyard almost. Um, Sam Bass is a famous outlaw um, that uh, actually died in the town where I live. And um, anyway, um, he had several hideouts within a 100-mile radius of this area, and we're going to be searching two of his hideouts to see if we can find anything um, that he might have left behind or hopefully a a cache. But, um, yeah, um, Rick and Marty won't be able to make it down in person, so I won't get to meet them, but we will be Skyping. They will do a Skype video, I guess, like while they're on the Oak Island, um, we're going to do like a Skype video, I think, uh, in the museum in Waco is where we're going to be filming that section, from what I understand. And um, that'll be fun to meet them virtually <laughs> in person. <laughs> so um, excited about that. And uh, I think if the schedule works out, they're going to get to make it uh, to... Um, to um, Utah when I film for the one in, Ju- in Utah in, in June. 
uh, the latter part of June. So, um, got a lot of filming and traveling going or planned anyway for yeah. you. Yeah. So it's exciting though, to be tra- chasing after that big of, um, that big of, um, you know, treasures, especially the one in Utah, I'm really excited about. Really, really excited about because we're talking Spanish mines, Spanish gold mines. So, Epic. anyway, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting excited just talking about it, thinking about it. Yeah, it would be ni- uh, nice, uh, Mike said, if they would invite me to Oak Island. That would be really cool. I think at the first of last season, that's what they did, is they would fly out whoever the treasure hunter was uh, to Oak Island to meet the Laginas brothers, and they would film in the war room. But I guess um, they don't do that for every episode. So I guess I won't be going to Oak Island anytime. Um <sighs> Anytime soon. <laughs> so, anyway, um, super cool. I'm excited about that. But I would be happy finding, I think, one gold coin. Yeah. Um, at the one here in Texas. I'd be, I'd be happy with one. <laughs> Just one. <laughs> Just the one. Mm-hmm. Heck, I'd be happy with like uh, half of one. <laughs> right. Right. And what's fascinating is like with the Sam Bass story, now there were two, there was one train robbery he did all the way up in Nebraska that was this freshly minted 1877 um, gold, $20 gold pieces. And um, he fled from there all the way to Texas. Now, there was a second robbery that he did where there were some more gold coins, and I don't understand. I've been reading about the history, and I don't quite understand what they're saying, but they said they were sending them back uh, to be re-stamped. So I don't know if there was like a... um, Like a minting problem? Yeah. Hmm. Or counter stamped? Oh, that's weird. Yeah, I don't know. So um, if we find one of these coins, we should be able to easily identify, though, you know, either one from either one of the the big the big portions of the gold coins that he stole. Huh. Uh, him and his posse, his men had had robbed, uh, we would be easily to uh, identify these, I think. So that should actually up the value of the treasure, I think. So um, another thing that uh, he stole on these robberies were, uh, like with the train robberies and the stagecoach robberies, they would take weapons like guns, knives, uh, pocket watches, especially gold pocket watches, so those are some of the things, and jewelry, uh, that we might find as well if there's a hidden stash at one of these locations. So we shall see. And these two locations, or especially one of the locations, I don't think has ever been searched by with a metal detector. Hmm. There's one in Denton, Texas, that we're not going to be going to that hideout, but I think it's been searched time and time again, and no one's ever found anything or if they found anything, they didn't report it. <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> anyway, but um, it's it's going to be some fun adventures, and who knows what might it might lead into. So we'll see. It's very exciting. And these uh, was asking if these were new locations. These aren't necessarily. New locations that I know of, they are locations that I think some play, they were on private, these are private property. So um, I don't, I think that's the reason why most of these locations haven't been checked out yet because they were on private property where I met the owner that he grew up on one of these properties and he's the one that's saying that 
to his knowledge, no one, he grew up on, uh, as a kid, walking, you know, and playing at part of this property. Uh, so, or a portion of these, it's several hundred acres, but, uh, so I don't think anyone knows where this area is. That's why I don't think anyone's ever metal detected it because it was privately owned and you know what I mean? So Those are some of the best ones to get. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah, definitely. So what about some of your upcoming adventures? Do you have anything planned? Um, I don't right now. <laughs> I know. So I think you and I had been talking about the weather being absolutely crazy. Um, that we went from like 60 to 90 <laughs> and not just 90 with the heat, but 90 with the humidity. <laughs> and we dropped back, I think it was 38 this morning from, I don't know, 88 yesterday afternoon. So it looks like, I think Wednesday we'll be back into the 90s again. So I know one thing that you and, uh, that you and, and probably some of our listeners could help with. So that river dump is on the table again to go try that out. And the water, obviously, it's, it's warm here, but not, the water is not warm yet. Uh, not the rivers anyway. And... So I was thinking if I could, ha you know, um, you know how you use the scoop, the long handled mm -hmm. scoop that you use. I was thinking about actually mm -hmm. standing on the riverbed, um, and the river oh, bed, and like good idea. scooping out. Yes. Uh, and then all I could think is anybody who's like owned or, or been around anybody who's had a pool with like that deep scoop. Uh, to get the leaves at the bottom, I'm like, oh, I wish I had something like that. But then I was like, you know, it'd be so cool if I had like, you know, the an extension cord and I could do the wet back or something. How oh, could yeah. I do this? I'm like the pump, you know what I mean? <laughs> I do have a small hand pump. Um, did you just pump that it sucks the stuff up? Yeah, that would be so cool. Mm, I don't know. I, you know, think, I think your scoop idea is a really good idea. Now, didn't you make, or John made for you, uh, didn't you make a little floaty uh, type contraption yeah, that I, you can throw your stuff up there? Yeah, I actually um, got one of those shark tooth sifters from, uh, I forget which company makes them, but with like the the PVC pipe and the metal mesh and stuff like that, I figured it was just support a local company, not local, but support a company, you know, made in the U.S. Um, and that mm -hmm. thing is awesome. So, yeah, it was one of those deals. But the way that the um, the way that the, the sides of the river are is it's much higher than the actual river, the banks. So scooping mm -hmm. up and then trying to dump into something, I don't know. I got to figure something out. <laughs> yeah. When to get a dredge. Ah, uh, yeah. A dredge would be awesome. That would be. Um, I was going to say something else. So, you can't, can you wait out there very far? Um, I, so, last year when I went. Do you think in, it's, oh yeah, it's muck and it's dump. Mm -hmm. So, you have to wear, like, I was wearing crappy sneakers um, because mm -hmm. I obviously knew that they were going to get wet and gross. But you could feel, like, the glass. You were ste I was stepping on bottles. And so that was a bummer. But you, there was no visibility because <laughs> it's all muck. Um, so mm -hmm. I was using the, just the hand scoop and going down and taking giant scoops and then putting it on the sifter. Um that's a lot of work <laughs> and with the water being cold so I've been I don't know I've been going back and forth on different ideas on how to or just you know apparently grow a pair and get in the water <laughs> <laughs> you can do it yep <laughs> you can do it you kind of need somebody there with you though oh yeah 
Yeah. Um, make sure you don't go alone. That's a little dangerous. Oh, yeah. No, I wouldn't go alone. The, right now, to yeah, for some reason, all a good majority of the rivers seem to be going down, but this one, it doesn't. And there's still, it's moving. So, yeah, it's just that my cards aren't being played right right now. But again, it's it's May. It's May in Maine, and we have, you know, the seriously just crazy, crazy weather. So just trying to take advantage of it. <laughs> And you, with what? You've got cold cold and rainy down there? Yeah, it's, it's not necessarily that cold. It's just rainy. <laughs> like, it's ra- been raining for the last three days, and it's just icky, and I want to get out. I've got my new Blue 3, and I want to go use it, and I can't. And I was thinking about taking it to Florida, but then... Not- that's a whole other thing. That would be a third suitcase that I would have to bring to pack that. And I really don't want to do pay for an extra. So uh, I think I'm going to have to wait till I get back. It's possible that I might need my blue three. Mm. Uh, when we're going to, there's a spring on one of the pro- the properties where we're going to be looking for Sam Bass's treasure that we might get in. Uh, but I don't think it's very deep, so I don't know if I'll need it. And it may be clear enough. Um, I know Wayne, Nugget Brain Wayne is in chat. Uh, Wayne gave me um, one of the um, Pika U. I think that's how you pronounce it. Wayne, you can put it in chat. You know what I'm talking about. Um, where and, and I know you know what I'm talking about. Um where you can look down the tube and it's got the lens at the bottom. Um, Yes. He gave me one. I'm going to make a video for him. And it's possible that if I end up using it on the TV show, that that might end up in the TV show. So I'll let you know if they do, Wayne, if they use it. Um, But I'd like to maybe use that to kind of peek in there if the water's clear enough and just kind of see how see to the bottom see if I see anything who knows the treasure might be in there hidden in there we'll see. <sighs> yeah I can't wait to use mine this year I do my dad made me one the like Home Depot bucket with the glass on the bottom cool cool yeah let me know how that goes and I'll be using that one I'm going to make a video too uh, with the one that Wayne gave me um, as soon as it stops Raining, and after I get back from Florida, um, that would be perfect timing. I might have a week in between before we start filming or a little time in there before we start filming again uh, to do a little uh, river hunting and get out there and do that. So we'll see. Very nice. Well, I hope you have an absolutely epic trip and a nice vacation. <laughs> thank time away. you. I, thank you. I wish you were getting a vacation. I wish you could come <laughs> meet, meet me and we could do some detecting and all that. But I understand. Can't get off work. And nope. I'm saving up for October. <laughs> yeah, we're going to do that. In October, so hopefully that will happen and we'll get to go. So anyway, but yeah, um, so I guess next week we will not be having a podcast because I will be traveling, and unless Amanda wants to do it alone, I doubt she does. Uh, so next week. Uh, We will not be having a podcast, but hopefully when I get back the following week, we can have a podcast. Um, And uh, then I'm probably going to be out for a little while though because we'll be filming. So um, please bear with us. Uh, We appreciate all of our listeners, and we appreciate you being being here with us tonight. And uh, we will be having um, some giveaways coming up soon, I promise. Uh, I've got some new merch and stuff that I want to give away. And we have a metal detecting book that we want to give away. 
uh, when we have our special guest. So um, y'all hang in there, bear with us. So yeah, and anyway. sorry, being sick, being sick, no fun. So thank you all. Yes, thank you all. Um, we appreciate every one of you and love you and um, happy hunting all. Talk to you soon. Good night all. Good night.